we play three different extended role-playing games. So for, uh, depending on the game, uh, three to four weeks of the class, uh, students are in character in class and they're running the show. They're the ones who are doing, uh, organizing what we're going to talk about on any given day, running the whole class session, and I'm just sitting in the background watching them. So it really flips who's in charge in the classroom in a big way. Ah, okay, so they're not reenacting. The technique, the pedagogy technique, is called reacting to the past, not reenacting the past. If they were reenacting, then it would be like Civil War reenactors, where they're trying to recreate exactly how history turned out. We're doing something completely different. Well, maybe not completely, but it's different. We run the clock up to a certain point. So for this game, uh, the French Revolution game, the clock runs until about mid-July of 1791. So it's the middle of the French Revolution. Uh, and everything that's happened in real history up until that point, the students uh, should assume has happened. But from that point on, the students can actually change the course of history based on what they do in their roles, in their characters. Uh, and so, you know, if it turns out that on a really important day, somebody's missing for, from, you know, class, then it's, you know, it's no different than what really happens in politics, where if you miss an important vote, that might change the outcome of the vote if you're in the U.S. Senate, for example. Um, or if somebody dies, like uh, Justice Scalia, then that changes how the Supreme Court behaves over the rest of its session until a replacement is found. Um, and so the students really learn from that, that they actually have the power to change the course of history today, not just the power to change the course of history in these role-playing games we're playing about the past. Reacting classes are the most fun I ever get to have as a professor. You know, I get to scheme with my students, I get to lie to my students, uh, I have, you know, email exchanges with them where I ask them uh, to tell me before the next class what, what people do you want to see die, in what order do you want to see them die. I encourage them to write up assassination plots. Um, I, uh, I, I don't, it's just, it's just ridiculously fun, right? I get to play too as a professor, even though I'm not actually a character playing a role in the game in the mix with them. And sometimes I feel a little sad that I don't get to play with them. Uh, you know, I want to mix things up a little bit more, or uh, I wish that I could play a role alongside of them. Um, but it's just so much fun to see what they do and how they come alive. It's also like they just learn the material in a very different way. I think it's much more visceral because of um, the way that their emotions get triggered in, in their roles, where either they're afraid, they're worried, they're stressed, or they're thrilled, they're happy, they're joyful, uh, they're laughing, they're making jokes. Uh, and, and so you just remember a lot more when you have a strong emotional connection to the material. I, I, I don't want to be a professor who just ends up doing the same old lectures and teaching the same way that I always have because it worked. Right? I want to be someone who, I, I still have that same joy about entering the classroom each time for the first time, just like I did the very first time I got to teach. And, um, and reacting really gives me that, that pleasure, right? That excitement, that, and, and also just the, the uncertainty of knowing how, it, how it's all gonna turn out, right? I get, to, I get to be watching history unfold just along with my students. <laughs>